Good day everyone! Welcome to my channel! My name is Joy and today I'm gonna talk about on moving to Canada the faster and easier way through the student permit program. Alright, so I will share to you my experience of my once dream in coming to Canada became a reality. But first, please subscribe and click the bell icon so that you'll be notified if I have new videos. I decided to upload this video because I've got so many friends who are asking me what's my agency, the cost, the school, the requirements, and the processing time. So, Hope I can answer most of your questions in the best of my ability in this video. First is choosing your agency. So my agency is Abayon Immigration Services. The owner is Mr. Glacerio Abayon Jr., who is my cousin. He's a licensed Canadian immigration consultant. I will place his contact details in the description below. My cousin asked me, like, Ate, do you want to come to Canada? Then I said, yes, of course. It was been my dream. And do you know that what I, why I said that it's faster and easier way to come here to Canada? Because 10 years ago, I tried applying already on coming here to Canada. So that's why I, I'm telling you that choosing your agency is very crucial. So to make it short, it wasn't successful in my very first agency. It was in Mall of Asia. Then the consultant retired. Then they moved into another office, into another one. So I paid already and it's super not good experience. I do recommend to research first on your agency or you can ask your friends that are already here. Maybe they can tell you like what's their agency. So in that way, you can be assured that you're in the right path. So as with my experience with my cousin, he was just starting that time, uh, last 2015. And it was December, I remember, that he just asked me, like, Ate, if you want to come here to Canada, let's get it started. So I just followed everything that he told me and right at that moment, like step-by-step -step procedure, by August 2016, I'm already here in Canada. Some of my friends asked me if they can do it by themselves. Yes, you can. If you have time to research, then go for it. As for me, I did not have the time and I did not want to miss any important document. Next, documents. First document required is the English certification. This is equivalent to IELTS. That's why I mentioned in my thumbnail that you don't need IELTS for this particular application. In order to have this English certification, you just have to request uh, from your school, say in, you, in your university, that English is the medium of instruction. As for me, I submitted two English certifications one coming from the university and one from my master's. However, if you have your IELTS, it's also good and you don't have to submit this English certificate. So why am I saying that this is the fastest and easiest way approach in coming to Canada? Number one is you really don't need the IELTS, but if you have it, then you can submit it. Because based from my experience, remember I mentioned that I had my first agency before? I took the IELTS twice. Yeah, and it's really hard. And it's very time consuming and so expensive. Because I was trying to reach in that particular application or process that I should have a very high score. When I just requested for the English certifications, it just took me, I think, maximum of two weeks you will also need fbi employment certificates birth certificate tor and diploma and resume i have with me here the documents that the vfs sent back to me 
once my application was approved. So this includes the bank statements, business certificate if applicable, family assets, say if you have a farm or whatever land you have. So basically, these are just the documents that will prove them that you can really pay for your tuition. So just for everybody's information, the VFS returned these documents because you will still need this one upon entering Canada. Tip for bank statements is say if you're gonna borrow money from your relatives and friends, uh, make sure not to place all of the money just once. So, uh, place it like by monthly, say 50,000 this month, 100,000 next month. So in that way, they're not gonna suspect like, oh, this is not his or her money at all. All right, now cost. First is the application fee. I do remember it's 150 Canadian dollars. However, I do recommend to verify this with your agency. Next is the VFS fee, which is around 1,000 pesos. Next is medical. So for my medical, I went to St. Luke's and this is around 10,000 pesos or lesser, maybe 9,000. For your medical, you should book an appointment first. Then once you're there, everything's organized. Maybe it took me half day to finish everything or it depends on how busy they are in a particular day. After that, you will be given a copy saying you're done with the medical. St. Luke's will submit the medical report via e-medical system and they will also email you that they already submitted it. Next thing, agency fee. As for me, I cannot remember. I think I still owe him. So it depends on the agency. Maybe it could be 50,000 pesos or it depends. And now the other cost. This includes the airfare, tuition fee, and accommodation. As for my airfare, I think it was 60,000 pesos because I came from my province, going to Manila, then going to Vancouver, then going to Calgary. So it depends. If you're gonna book it earlier, then the cheaper. Next, tuition fee. Mine cost 9,000 Canadian dollars and this is good for one semester alone. Take note that you should pay the tuition first because the receipt will be included as one of the documents. Last is accommodation, and it will range from 300 to 800 Canadian dollars. And it will depend on which place you are and what type. Say if you will be in a condo. As for me, it's free because I stayed with my relatives and I'm so lucky and thankful that they let me stay in their place. It really saved me a lot. Thank you so much. Problem is, what if I don't have any friends or relatives here in Canada? One solution is to stay in a dormitory in the school. Now we move on in choosing your school. This is important for your chosen school must be in a designated learning institute list because schools that are in this list are the only ones that are eligible to give you the postgraduate work permit. I will talk about this on my next video. To be sure about this, best thing is to ask your agency. If you're gonna study here in Calgary, I do recommend my school, the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, better known as SAIT. SAIT offers more than 100 programs in technology, trades, and business. And it has a high rate of employment for graduates. Proven! Others asked me on what course to take. Say for me, I'm a civil engineer by profession in the Philippines, so I took a course related to it, and I took engineering design and drafting technology. So what happens if I'm gonna take a complete different course in school? Say I will take professional cooking. So this might affect the, for the school to give you letter of acceptance. And this letter of acceptance is one of the documents again required to be submitted. So how many years should I take to study? I do recommend to take 
two years because this two years will give you another three years for the postgraduate work permit say if you're gonna take only one year to study here and that will only give you one year for postgraduate work permit and this is not a lot of time in order for you to process to become a PR and now processing time I will give you a timeline based from my experience so remember I talked to my cousin December 2015 and January we submitted the documents to the school February 2016 Sate gave me a letter of acceptance. March, preparing of the other documents. April, submission. May, medical. July, student permit approval. August, welcome to Canada. So the processing time was 8 to 12 weeks only. And now for a Q&A portion. First, someone asked me, can I come to Canada with my family as a student? So the answer is yes. So as for me, since I'm a single mom, it's really hard for me to come here to study and work at the same time with my son. Next question. Can I work part-time while studying? The answer is yes. You can work 20 hours per week and full-time during summer. As for the case, if coming here with your spouse, your spouse can work full-time which is 40 hours and you as a student work uh, 20 hours and for last question for this video are the schools offering scholarships or grants and the answer is a big yes as for me uh state are offering scholarship grants which is amounting from 500 canadian dollars up to 3000 canadian dollars so on my first year i received one thousand uh, canadian dollars and on my second year i received two grants which is amounting to one thousand three hundred canadian dollars so in conclusion if you want to come here to canada the fastest and easiest way take the student permit program no ielts no point system and eight to twelve weeks processing time only Thank you for watching my video and if you have questions feel free to ask in the comment section below and I will try to answer them one by one. If you like this video be sure to give it a like and if you like to see more videos like this please subscribe. Thank you and see you next time!